Jonathan. Good morning. I'm Robert Esker with NetApp. Wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, NetApp's integration with OpenStack, in particular in the Havana release, what we've been up to, and uh, give you a little sneak peek into uh, capability we're introducing for Icehouse and beyond. Uh, by the way, uh, it's loud here. Perhaps you can hear me. I certainly can't. So if you have any questions, uh, let's, let's pen them until after, and I'll uh, be happy to answer them. So just a little bit about NetApp and, and open source. Uh, we have a long history of working uh, with and around and in the op open source communities. If you look at our core operating system, Data on tap, uh, it is in sel itself BSD derived. Uh, we uh, we are the primary employers of, uh, or we're the employers of some of the primary maintainers of NFS and Linux, for example. And so something like OpenStack was very organic for us. It was a uh, what allowed us to uh, join as the uh, first major storage vendor as early as we did. So we've been involved for uh, over two and a half years. Two and a half years now. Uh, this is the sixth design summit we've been part of, having uh, sponsored those. Our first integrations started showing up in the Essex release. And I'll talk to you a little bit about Manila here in just a bit. So in a nutshell, uh, and this is certainly highly distilled and maybe perhaps oversimplified, uh, our core co set of core competencies, the things that we do best, you know, both whether that be shared or dedicated storage solutions, making sure that those are delivered to you in a flash integrated and, and cloud, a flash accelerated and cloud integrated fashion. So obviously in this context, we're talking about OpenStack. Um, you know, our clustered ONTAP operating system, which I would expect most of you probably haven't been, uh, have, aren't familiar with, is a fundamentally horizontal scale-out capability, clustered as in uh, horizontal scale-out cluster, scale-out for performance, scale-out for, for availability and such. Uh, that lends itself very much to the OpenStack Design Center, uh, so it's uh, where most of our emphasis is placed. Uh, if you, if you, you've probably seen a variation of this, uh, it's certainly not a, a NetApp-specific way of looking at the world, but you know, increasingly future IT looks like a broker of services, whether that be something you build on your own premise with an OpenStack, or maybe perhaps it's some form of interaction with a hyperscale provider or some other form of service provider. So how do we enable that? Uh, you know, the, the, the notion of hybrid, hybrid cloud, I think, is still very much unrealized. So how do I actually connect the points? How do I have a common, you know, how do I actually move data between them? And is there a common runtime amongst them? Of course, OpenStack uh, significantly eases that to the extent that it's adopted, and that you could potentially have an OpenStack API availed at one of the top two places and certainly run it yourself. Uh, a very common use case, a, a growing use case you, that we see at NetApp is uh, the use of OpenStack as a way to repatriate from Amazon Web Services. Or perhaps it's maybe not to bring it all back, but to establish more of a, a rational relationship so on an ongoing basis you can burst into it. What's OpenStack do? Well, it provides you, among other things, uh, an API compatibility, uh, the ability to, to take uh, code that was originally levied against an AWS and, and have the, uh, the runtime on your own prem. That still leaves the, uh, the remaining problem of data is, is most unlike a utility or a power utility in cloud. It's, it's sort of the uh, proverbial water utility. And there's, uh, this is certainly uh, something I'm borrowing from. I can't recall how, who it was that said it first and how to attribute it. But the basics of it is that water or, or um, data has the qualities of, of mass, of gravity. It's hard to move from one location to the other. Uh, it takes time. The width of the pipes matter. Format is, an, is, is a consideration as well. Uh, so, you know, how do we actually achieve that? Uh, basically, look for us uh, to start unveiling some capabilities that connect these endpoints, uh, that allow you to establish a common data fabric amongst them, and ease the movement in an opaque way and in a thin way between those endpoints. So, again, you know, OpenStack is critical in providing that runtime compatibility atop all of this, this underlying data fabric. So a you know, very intentionally simplified view of OpenStack services and where NetApp's product portfolio maps to it. We see folks deploying uh, OpenStack image, aka Glance, to great effect using our deduplication technologies. That required zero lines of code to enable, but I'll talk to you in a, just a minute uh, about some enhancements we've made. Uh, we've placed most of our, our uh, development emphasis on OpenStack block storage. Uh, on the object side, I'll talk to you a little bit about the deployment of Swift on a product that we call E-Series uh, in a kind of a unique way that helps uh, save you some, uh, some money in scaling it at, uh, at the extreme. 
And there's something missing when you kind of consider OpenStack as the leading open infrastructure as a service capability. So it's the mystery guest. I'll talk about that in just a second. And so NetApp does lots of interesting things well. My point isn't to go all of the, into all of those, but that's where we start with. Make sure that those capabilities that power your business or power your cloud, power you know, what it is you actually need to, to deliver for your tenants, for your, uh, to meet your SLAs, uh, and make sure those aren't hidden by the abstractions of OpenStack. So you want the abstraction to an extent in the sense that it becomes a, a way of, of keeping open and allowing you to move from one vendor or one implementation to the next. But at the same time, you don't want to like dilute the value of those capabilities behind the abstraction. So that's where we start with. Make sure you can get NetApp unique capabilities through something like a block, OpenStack block storage service, aka Cinder. So just briefly, let me show you a little bit about how we attempt to do that. Uh, so this is, a, of course, Horizon, and I'm going to show you how uh, one, you can establish volume types. So you know, here we've created a uh, Hong Kong volume type and then a Macau uh, volume type. It's entirely arbitrary. Whatever you want to call it, red, blue, green, dogs, cats, birds, it's whatever makes sense to, to, to your tenant base. Uh, you know, once you've established those, uh, then you are able to take unique characteristics of a backend, so the Cinder driver instance, uh, some of those are listed here, pin provisioning, deduplication, compression. QoS is not listed there. That's another capability. And you're able to compose those into these types. And so in the earlier example, I showed you a, a volume type of Hong Kong and a volume type of Macau. Uh, now I'm going to actually attach. So you'll see that, that actually, oops, sorry. <laughs> um, you'll see that. Uh, uh, you'll see that the volume types we created, and then you'll see volume type extra specs. And of course, since we haven't actually established or associated any with the volume types, uh, we'll need to go ahead and create them. So uh, in, in, uh, in Havana, we have uh, allowed, basically taken most of the gamut of OpenStack set of unique capabilities, whether they be efficiency, availability, performance assurance, right, quality, of sure, uh, quality of service or availability capabilities, and express them in the form of a volume type extra spec. You can take those capabilities, and here we're going to take uh, mirrored, we're going to take compression, and I can't remember, I think I used dedupe as the last one, uh, and we're going to uh, associate them with the volume type, and uh, you'll see that here listed in just a second. Sorry for my slow typing. And so now you see that, in fact, uh, those are associated with volume type. So uh, maybe a little bit more clear depiction of how this is all working. So um, hey, I need to fire up eight uh, CentOS instances. You know, perhaps I'll select from a, an image that has a LAMP stack on it, um, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to select from uh, volume type silver. And so in that prior example, not the not the demo one, but the, uh, the prior slide. We had defined silver as having a replication policy. And so what basically happens when you select from it is the volume type that's created becomes automatically replicated. It automatically becomes mirrored to the remote destination. So I also want to talk to you a little bit about um, the creation of, of instances, uh, in particular where you might want to boot from volume. And, and some of the reasons why you might want to do that is if you actually want a persistence model by default. If you're not familiar, OpenStack, uh, by default, an instance is ephemeral. There's no assurance of data being retained over a boot lifecycle. That's certainly appropriate for a certain style of application. But if you're moving any sort of classic infrastructure into an OpenStack you know, as a service kind of model, uh, then you will almost certainly want to provide a persistence model for that application stack. So let's boot from volume, but do it in a more efficient way. Here we're actually um, booting from an image, and I want to, I want to show you a, um, uh, an optimization that we put into Havana, where we're able to take some of NetApp's unique block sharing technology or cloning capability to speed the creation of new instances. So again, by default, a, uh, an image is copied out to the compute nodes, uh, and if, if it so happens you want to light up another instance based on that same image that's been copied out, it'll take that cache and then use it but if it happens that, that Nova says, I want to put it on another compute node, then that copy operation has to occur again. Uh, and basically, we're, we're, we're instead um, uh, going to use boot from volume. And where Glance is located on NetApp, uh, the Glance image repository, will, instead of copying it out the first time, will clone it, which is instantaneous. 
um, and it doesn't consume any additional space until there's a net new write or overwrite. So that, that's the first instance. And then thereafter, the same thing. We'll, uh, we'll take that first uh, uh, clone version and we'll create a hierarchy of clones. And the net effect is that you're able to create instances significantly faster than otherwise, and there's not the storage burn associated. It also enables models when you're using boot from volume where you might be able to boot stateless. You don't necessarily have to have a local disk if you don't care to. So there's a variety of options in Havana uh, for deploying NetApp with, uh, with, open, with OpenStack block storage. Uh, you know, the first question you ask is, uh, are our uh, classic mode, seven mode, or our uh, next generation horizontal scale out capability I just described, clustered on tap? Uh, whether or not you want to inform the provisioning decision through some middleware capabilities, uh, some, uh, some NetApp products that uh, allow you to do some higher order things beyond what we've described here or to have more of a direct model of interaction, which tends to actually align better to hyperscale requirements. It's, it's also simpler to deploy. And the last is uh, iSCSI or NFS. Um, you may, uh, one of the things that we contributed back in Folsom, I believe, yeah, Folsom is when we debuted it, was an NFS reference driver and then a corresponding NetApp-specific NFS driver. So you might think, well, a block storage service, how could NFS have anything to do with that? It's quite simple um, because the majority use case for a sender for consumption of a sender volume is uh, is an instance. It's a persistence ad additional capacity for an instance. Um, we uh, we're, we're basically rely upon the mediation of the hypervisor, uh, the mediation of a component called libvirt, to mount NFS to the location of the compute node and treat files as a virtual block device. And, and we do that for reasons of scalability. You can do vastly more files in an export than you can do, you know, iSCSIs or LUNs, uh, you know, per storage system. Uh, that said, you know, it, we don't have any preference here. There are obviously uses of Cinder uh, where um, you, in fact, want a real LUN back, uh, perhaps bare metal, non-vert type, uh, type of uses. So, you know, a summary of the things I just talked about. We also collaborated within the community uh, IBM specifically to enable a migration capability uh, to go from one backend to the next. And the thing that I was, I was referring to as missing is uh, specifically support for shared file systems. So, um, you know, in going down this path, we've come to understand uh, why. Uh, there's some additional hard work. Uh, if you accept, and I, I don't mean for this to be very controversial, that OpenStack is very much built in the image of an Amazon Web Services, well, certainly Amazon Web Services doesn't avail a shared file system as a service or distributed file system as a service. So thus, OpenStack doesn't. Um, however, we think that you know, this has the ability to grow beyond it being an image. You know, and I'm not going to get into the, the API debate that occurred in the community over the last couple months. But we very much do believe that you know, the native APIs of OpenStack are valuable unto themselves. But so, in fact, is the uh, shim support for large hyperscale providers. One of the things we're adding, though, is support for shared file systems. There's a new project called Manila. Um, in a nutshell, hey, I've got instances X, Y, and Z, and I want to provide access to an existing SIF share um, uh, you know, to, to do gainful work. Uh, so this uh, basically is the orchestration of that activity. You know, I want to create a net new NFS export. We built Manila to be sufficiently abstract to the, uh, the share, a shared or distributed file system type. So we've got folks like IBM uh, who are looking at this from a GPFS perspective, Red Hat from Gluster, and we're actively trying to build community around this. We've just recently submitted a, uh, uh, the uh, formal application for incubation. Unfortunately, we're a little late in getting that in, uh, uh, not, uh, decided upon ahead of this design summit, but in mid-November, the technical committee will render a decision. Um, we are already fully integrated in uh, StackForge, so we welcome anyone who's interested to uh, join the community. Uh, and uh, look at uh, make, and implementing uh, uh, your shared file system of choice. So uh, I, I do want to briefly mention NetApp has a, a leading uh, shared uh, converged infrastructure solution uh, called FlexPod. We work with uh, Cisco with, uh, on their UCS and Nexus line. Uh, the very first version of that is, uh, is uh, we, we're unveiling here this week in the form of a Red Hat OpenStack platform, or RHEL OSP, Red Hat, Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform-based version. Uh, there is a uh, reference uh, guide, a reference architecture that's been uh, published on uh, netapp.com slash OpenStack. That's in a preview form, but the full release will, uh, will appear here in the coming months. Uh, I also want to just mention that we have an E-Series product, which is a very dedicated high-throughput storage device. We'll have support. We already have a prototype store, uh, driver for Cinder. And uh, we'll have that upstream in Icehouse. So uh, look for that as well. 
And uh, I did want to briefly talk about Swift. So let's see how much time. I got one minute, so I'm going to speak very quickly. Uh, Swift uses a consistent hashing ring for, for pl protection placement, uh, which makes perfect sense uh, given its initial design goals. Uh, we happen to think that um, one of the qualities of our E-Series product uh, is it allows you to deploy Swift at a uh, much more efficient in a much more efficient manner, uh, reducing the total amount of disk and equipment that need be deployed. Classically, Swift has not been uh, aligned to a parity protection scheme because, uh, frankly, you gotta, you're exposed to very long rebuild times. We've taken the same crush algorithm that Ceph uses, uh, that same academic work, and implemented another version of it in our, our E-Series line uh, within the frame uh, that mitigates the effect of these long rebuild times, and you can now use a parity scheme again. And so basically it reduces the replication count significantly, and it also reduces the pressure of the ongoing replication and removes an inhibitor to the ultimate scale you can achieve with Swift. That's also a reference architecture that'll be published on netapp.com slash OpenStack uh, here uh, in the next week. And I, uh, I really want to appreciate, uh, I appreciate everyone's time here. Come see it at the Manila Unconference session. And uh, likewise, uh, if you're attending the Design Summit, uh, we're trying to work within the center community to establish a, a common notion of uh, vault type extra specs. Uh, uh, you know, for 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 deploy. And this is based on deployer requests. So uh, if you have any uh, opinions on that matter, I'd love to see you there. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.